Today we're going to be setting up and testing a Scott Drive controller with an EMRAX 228 permanent magnet motor. Here is the EMRAX motor we're going to be testing. It's coupled to a Siemens 5135 induction motor. Here is a closer look at the EMRAX 228 motor. Um, this particular motor is fitted with both hall sensors and an encoder. The peak power is about 100 kilowatts and the motor weighs 12.3 kilos. As the name suggests, it is 228 millimeters in diameter and about 80 millimeters in depth. The unusual thing about EMRAX motors is that the rotor is on the outside. Um, these motors come in with three different cooling options. There is an air-cooled version, there is a water-cooled version, and there is a combined cooled version which is both water and air-cooled. Uh, this version is the combined cooling version. Um, now the air-cooled versions have holes on the outside perimeter and grooves cut on the sides of the motor. Um, this is not a problem except at high speed the motor is noisier than most other um, AC motors. Now this motor also comes in three different voltage options and has three different maximum currents. The low voltage option has a maximum current of 900 amps. The medium voltage version, which this one is, has a maximum current of 340 amps. And the high voltage version has a maximum current of only 240 amps. Um, for the phase wiring, we're using yellow for the U phase, green for the V phase, and blue for the W phase. Uh, this motor has one internal sensor, which is connected up to the Scott Drive controller. So we're able to monitor the motor winding temperature. Okay, now we are ready to set up the Scott Drive controller to work with the EMRAX motor. Now to do this, we need to go to the Drive Settings tab and enter a few settings from the motor data sheet. The first setting we need to enter is a number of poles, and this motor has 20 poles. The next value we need to enter is the motor back EMF, uh, this particular motor has 0.0478 volts RMS per RPM. Um, you don't need to worry about the rotor inductance or rotor resistance for this motor. Um, so the next setting we need to enter is the maximum motor current, which the data sheet lists as 340 amps RMS. Um, we don't need to worry about the motor voltage. And the motor RPM, the maximum motor RPM is about 5000 RPM. The next group of settings we need to enter are the motor sensor parameters. This motor is fitted with both hall sensors and a two channel encoder. So we need to enter the number of uh, pulses per revolution that each encoder channel produces. In this case it's 2048. Okay, the next setting we need to enter is the encoder index angle. Um, and this is usually found by trial and error. Uh, the best method is probably is to find the angle where the um, motor produces the minimum amount of torque. Um, this is also the angle where the rotor may start spinning in either direction when you apply the throttle. Um, then to find the correct angle you need to add plus or minus 90 to this value um, and in this case we ended up with a value of minus 36 degrees. The next setting we need to enter is encoder direction. For this encoder and motor, we needed to set it to reversed. The other option is standard. Um, if we set it to standard on this option, then the rotor locks when we try to run it. So the correct setting is reversed. The last setting we need to decide on is whether we're going to use hall sensors or hall sensors plus encoder to determine the rotor position. The SD100 is capable of just using hall sensors to estimate the rotor position. Um, and it, or we can use both the encoder and hall sensors combined, which we're, is what we're doing in this case. Um, if the setting is set to encoder plus hall sensors, then the controller uses the hall sensors to determine the initial rotor angle, and then once the first index pulse is received, 
and the encoder is used as a primary uh, rotor uh, position sensor. Uh, the remaining settings are not specific to this motor, um, so we will discuss them in detail in another video. Now that we've set up the controller, we're ready to do some testing with the EMRAX motor. Initially we'll just do some testing with the motor unloaded. Okay, here we go. This is about 1400 RPM. Okay, that is just over 3000 RPM. As I mentioned earlier, um, the grooves and holes on, these, on the rotor make a lot of noise when the motor is spinning. Um, that was just over 3000 RPM. So if we do that once more. Right, that time was about 4,300 RPM. If we look at the SEView software, we can see uh, the speed the motor reached in those two runs. The first one was just over 3,000 RPM, and the second run was a bit over 4,000 RPM. Okay, we're ready to do the second test on the EMRAX motor. Uh, for this test we're going to load the motor up, um, we're going to do that with the Siemens motor over here and we're going to limit the speed to about 2000 RPM. And we've also turned on the water cooling system for this test um, and we're going to put about 300 amps RMS through the EMRAX motor and see how it handles it. Okay, there we go. Okay, here is the results of the test we just did. Um, the top graph shows the motor current reached about 340 amps, and the motor speed after initial overshoot was held at about 2000 RPM by the Siemens motor. We can um, also graph the motor temperature. So the motor temperature reached about 42, 43 degrees um, and the IGBT temperature reached about 63, 64 degrees and the other parameter that's useful to look at is the HV link power. Now this is the power into the controller um, the power into the motor is a little bit less, maybe 1 to 2 percent so the link power reached about 44 kilowatts. Okay, now we're going to repeat the last test um, on the MRX motor. This time we're using the encoder sensor as a primary sensor to determine the rotor position. Okay, here we go.
Okay, we just tested the motor for about 50 seconds under full load, uh, 330 amps that time. Now I'm going to repeat the last test, except this time I'm going to increase the speed limit on the Siemens motor. Now we do this in the Drive Settings tab, and we change the maximum motor speed from 2000 to 3000. We apply the new setting. Now you'll notice the regenerative braking mode is set to dyno testing on the Siemens motor. Okay, now we're ready to run. Okay, here we can see the motor power at the top, um, about 70 kilowatts. Um, the speed was held at about 3000 RPM by the Siemens motor. We'll have a look at the IGBT temperature. So that reached about 65 degrees. Then we'll have a look at the motor temperature down the bottom. And that reached about 55 degrees. During that last run, we had the maximum motor current set to 330 amps, and we only got about 70 kilowatts. So this time, I've set the motor current to 340 amps, and we're going to see if we can get a little bit more power. Okay, that time we got around 75 kilowatts um, peak power into the Scott Drive controller. We can have a look at the um, motor temperature. And the IGBT temperature. We can also have a look at the motor current, which was set to um, 340 amps as a limit. Now we'll go back to uh, the power into the first Scott Drive controller, and then we'll go across and have a look at the power out of the Siemens motor and second Scott Drive controller. Okay, now we're looking at the um, SEVU software, which is um, connected to the second Scott Drive 100 controller. And we see that we were regening about 55 kilowatts um, at the same time as the uh, first Scott Drive controller was consuming about 74, 75 kilowatts of power. We can also have a look at the um, Temperature of this motor and controller, uh, Siemens motor temperature, is a lot lower than the um, EM Rax motor, as to be expected. And also the temperature of the second Scott Drive controller is lower. Um, okay, here we can see the, the key specifications 
for the EMRAX 228 motor. Um, the motor we have here is the medium voltage combined cooled motor. Uh, if we look at the maximum motor current, we can see that it's listed as 340 amps. And we could also see that the maximum motor torque is listed at 240 newton meters for a few seconds. Um, if we scroll to the next page, we can see that at 340 amps, on the torque curve there, um, the torque should only be about 220 newton meters. So I'm not sure where the value of 240 newton meters come, comes from. Um, even at 360 amps there, the torque is still only 225 newton meters. Now if we look at the um, torque and power curves a little bit more closely, we can see that at 2000 RPM, the peak power is about 50 kilowatts. And at 3000 RPM, the peak power should be 74 kilowatts. Um, this corresponds pretty closely to what we found um, testing the SD100 with the EMRX motor. Um, what is unclear as to whether this peak power curve is at 340 amps or 360 amps. They don't actually specify clearly in the data sheet. Um, in summary, after testing the EMRAX 228 motor with a Scott Drive 100 controller at 2000 RPM and 3000 RPM fully loaded, the motor performs as indicated in the data sheet. Thanks for watching today. We'll bring you some more videos soon. Some of the motors we're going to test are the Remy HVH250 motor, the Siemens 5138 high voltage motor, and a generic 55 kilowatt brushless DC motor from China. We will also be testing the Scott Drive 250 and the Scott Drive 300 controllers. The SD250 is designed for bus voltages up to 400 volts and currents up to 800 amps RMS. And the SD300 is designed for bus voltages up to 800 volts and currents of up to 600 amps RMS.